Welcome back. We're at our final block of the day. And our first speaker of this final block will be Lana Gibson, the director of Lanalytics. Lana has worked in digital data for more than a decade using Google Analytics, SEO, social media, and other data to understand the user experience and improve performance. Today, Lana is gonna share some of the top trends she's seen emerge in UX. Fun fact about Lana, despite her love of data these days, when Lana was younger, she actually hated data and instead at uni, she studied English literature. Please help me welcome Lana to the stage. Hi everyone, yeah, thanks for the welcome. Um, yeah, so I'm Lana and I run Lanalytics and we help clients make the most out of their websites, their SEO and their social media with the power of data. Um, and yeah, I hated data when I was younger and I just felt like it was really, um, it was kind of impenetrable. Like I it was, had this impenet impenetrable logic where I didn't understand how it worked and how it really related to me. Um, and and, and, and I, I got into websites through content writing. So I did some content writing for ACC. And then, and that, that kind of, and I kind of got into data sideways, probably like a lot of you, I got really interested in the humans behind the computer screen. Um, so, you know, what, how are people actually engaging with this content? What are they doing? I went through a couple of user research sessions where people got really emotional at this computer screen. They got really angry at the content or upset at what they had to deal with. And this kind of led me to, um, to, to you know, to see, to try to find the value in data, try and make it usable and practical and, and you know, plain English. So I started my data journey over a decade ago at gov.uk. And it was awesome there because they just stripped everything back, all the old government, um, all the old government uh, content, and we were able to start afresh with um, content designed by data and services designed by data. So looking at search terms for what people want and using that to define our content. Um, so yeah, th this talk is 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 the the recurring trends I've found in over a decade of data. So I really hope it's useful for you guys. Um, you might know some of them. Some of them might not be a surprise. But I've found that people find it, it can really um, use my blog posts and and other things to help persuade the higher ups about uh, you know that change needs to happen. Um, using the case study. So hopefully you know you, you you'll find out some new things, but you might also be able to use the data for your own um, for your own purposes. So let me just share this this presentation. Cool, hoping you can all see that. Um, yeah, so first trend, the home page is not the front door. Now, everyone always wants their content on the home page. It's like the prime piece of real estate. Guinevere from Research and Development knows that if she could just get her 500 page PDF on the inchworm on the homepage, it would get thousands of visits. Um, whereas in reality, um, on a lot of the sites that I look at, very few people start their journey on the homepage. So in a sample of eight sites, an average of 25% of users started on the homepage. Now, keeping in mind, this is for your larger sites. For your smaller sites, people often Google your brand name. For example, for me, it'd be Lanalytics and let's start on the homepage. But for your larger sites, um, often you'll find that this is the case. So for example, RNZ, they had a really long homepage and they um, put a lot of effort into it. Everyone was always wanting their content on the homepage. Their news stories at the top um, you know, it was it was just a really they, they really focused a lot of attention and resources on it. But we found out that only fifteen percent of users actually visited the homepage, which is quite a low amount. Um, and in reality, the audience were young and news hungry, and they were finding RNZ news stories on their iPhone home screen on their news screen. So here's an example, and they were clicking into these pages, into these news stories, bypassing the homepage completely. And so you can see here a Google Analytics real time report showing that 400 people, um, when I clicked on that, that page from the iPhone, they were doing the same thing. 
So RNZ were able to transfer this energy from the homepage to SEO, Google Optimization, um, which resulted in a 33% increase in Google traffic. And also their social media, you know, getting things out through these, getting their deep level content out through these channels. Um, number two, Google is the front door. This is related. Um, Again, most of the traffics I look at, at, most of the sites that I look at, over half of traffic comes from Google, which is huge, right? So if you've got a new site, um, uh, you need to, you really want to be looking at that Google demand and trying to meet it. Um, so for example, Tupu, it's a site about Māori land, about whenua Māori, um, aiming to connect Māori people with their land. Um, and, you know, so they get traffic for search terms containing Tupu, of course. Um, and But but the, the idea is um, they also get traffic for searches that don't include their brand name. So things like Māori land grants, Māori land ownership, Hepotama rangatahi. And this is, we did a lot of SEO work with their content to ensure this. So this is really important. This is people who don't know about Tupu. They're just searching for their needs. They're searching for Māori land grants um, and they're just wanting the best possible result and it's this traffic so you can see here this is that these are the non-branded um, search clicks clicks from Google coming through and you can see here they've steadily increased Google traffic takes a while to pick up um, but it just shows you know really it's a really good idea to consider that search demand so you can reach people who don't even know about your organization and and focus on that traffic Number three, people get really confused in Google. I'm sure we've all been here. So um, this is just an example. If, if you want an official source of information, you, you really want it to be clear in Google results. You know, you're searching for working for families tax credit. Um, and I'm sure we've all had this, this situation with government, you know, especially government services. We search for something and multiple results come up showing seemingly the same thing. So for example, working for families tax credits, we've got a working for families results result at the top and we've got an inland revenue result further down. It's, they look really similar. Um, so again, it's probably not new, but it's just check your competition in Google results. So with, with this example, we were able to show with Hitwise data that this was a problem, that people are actually going into the Working for Families website and having to click through to inland revenue. So it was a really confusing user journey um, and to get what they needed. And we were able to get that search result taken down at the top. So there's just a clear view. And it just happens so often. So it's a really good idea. Even if you're a commerce site, you know, check who you're going to be competing with. Are there big players? Um, are there, you know, are there, are there similar, similar um, results? It's a really good idea to, to get your unique point of difference across. Um, another example about confusing search results is the Ministry for Primary Industries. So they've got a whole section about exporting products overseas. Um, and they had Google titles that weren't descriptive enough. So we search for how to export wine. They have a page on that, but it's called Steps to Exporting. There's no mention of wine. Um, so we, we included wine and the other products in the titles and we saw Google traffic doubled over a few weeks. So you can really see the value. And it's again, common sense, but the data shows that those descriptive titles are so key. Um, you know, on page, you might have the context of your IA or navigation, but in Google, of course, they're just alone. They need all that descriptive information. And you can actually create separate Google titles as an alternative as an alternative to your page on page title in the CMS um, to do that. Number four, marketing can lead to pointless user experiences. So this is if, if you're getting an, a marketing agency to do some campaigns, so or SEO, some social campaigns, um, really work with them to define meaningful success. Because um, I've seen a lot of clients getting getting reports with like thousands of hits and hundreds of um, impressions and really impressive numbers that don't mean a lot. Um, so for a, a good example of this is homepage bounces. So homepage bounces are like someone walking past your shop front and just glancing in the window, not even engaging at all with your content. Um, you know, you really want people to be interacting with you meaningfully, having conversions such as downloads, contacts, purchasing something. So it really pays to connect your um, or to to connect your data 
with your advertising and just see that it's really resulting in meaningful success. So an example of this is Cocato. They are a um, biosecurity body, a government body, and looking after New Zealand's wildlife. And every year they have um, nominations, they have awards for people who are excelling in the biosecurity arena. So every year you can nominate someone through their website. This is the form. Um, so they want to see, you know, the, out of their their campaigns, their marketing, what's resulting in the most traffic and the and, and, and in the most nominations. So we give them, we gave them a view um, on traffic to the website, broken down into each traffic channel. So social media, referral traffic from other websites, organic search, and you can see here the traffic trends in each. We also go deeper and really pull out those conversions, so you can see awards conversions, they can see how many people are actually submitting a nomination from each of those channels. And that's the kind of granularity that you really want. Uh, number five, no, most on-site search functions are rubbish. Um, and I really and, and enjoyed the talk before about, um, I think it was Ben talking about Victoria's search. And I'm actually got a Victoria, a Victoria University search example too, but it doesn't deal with his algorithm, which I'm sure is amazing. Um, so yeah, so most on-site search functions are rubbish and we all know this, we try to search on sites and many of us go back to Google and just try again, right? Because they don't, they often don't work very well. Um, this is actually uh, no one's fault. Algorithms are just really hard to get right. If you tweak one thing, you often kick a lot of other things off so that it ruins a lot of other things. Um, and the only time I've seen someone improve a search algorithm is actually for gov.uk. And this guy was like a search wizard. He had long hair, velvet slippers. He wore velvet slippers every day. He was a data scientist from Cambridge and he worked on that search function for years. Um, and, and it did start to improve. But unless you have a search wizard, I'd re really re recommend um, using things like boosters, suggestions, and just altering your content, putting yourself in the shoes of the user. And so a good example is Victoria University. They, a, a timetable is one of their most popular searches and they have a result up there. And when you get in, go into that page, you can actually see that they cover two user needs. You've got your personal timetable at the top and then you've got your academic timetables. And of course, most people want their personal study timetable. Um, but so it, we don't have these confusing results in search. Another one, another really popular search is calendar. Um, loads of people search for this. Now this actually, uh, from, from the university perspective, this refers to the university calendar, which is dates, contact information, statutes, policies, regulations. You can clearly see it's not like the common use case. Um, so they suggest date, dates and deadlines. There's a try this function where you can go in and um, that gives you your study dates for students who are the most, you know, the most popular searches. So here are Victoria University's top searches. Um, and you can see, this is in Google Analytics, you can see your top searches. And search exits on the right show, that, that means when someone's searched and they've found results, but they haven't found anything relevant to click on, they've just exited your site. So um, you can see their search exits are very low, which is a good thing for their top searches. So I really recommend, you know, having a look at your top searches and see, seeing if you can improve that user journey, checking that your search exits aren't too high. Uh, six is more content equals less findability. Um, so yeah, get rid of the clutter. And um, this, so a good example of this is to Papa Venues. Um, they had, they. They um, provide uh, venues for conferences, weddings, school balls, meetings, and you can book or inquire online with their inquiry form. Now this form had over 20 fields. It was huge, you can't see, but it just scrolled down forever. And the team were really reluctant to, to remove any of these fields. I mean, we all know it's great to have as few as few fields as possible on forms, um, but they were really reluctant because it was capturing vital information that, they, you know, they thought they really needed. Um, but if through a hot, hot jar video recording, we were able to show it, it, it videos real users. Um, you can see the ghostly mouse moving around and what, what real users are doing. And we were able to show that it took ages 
for users to complete this form. They've, this In this one, they've been there eight minutes already, and you can see they're getting error messages. They're not able to fill out the form and complete it. So that really helped us um, shorten the form, which resulted in a 64% increase in online, in online inquiries over eight months, which was pretty huge. Um, now, gov.nz rates rebate. So this is the council rates rebate, the refund you can get from your council rates. Um, not a hugely sexy example, but it's really hard. I, I found it quite hard to show the benefit of decluttering your site um, with data. So here's, here's an example that I would like to share. Um, so basically rates rebate, they had, uh, there was a lot of content, people who wanting to apply for a rates, rates rebate couldn't find out if they were eligible and they couldn't find out how to apply because there was just too much content. So we stripped everything away um, and we looked at Google searches. So this is Google Keyword Planner and you can see what people are searching for online or in Google. Um, you can see here top terms were what is a rates rebate rates rebate calculator and rates rebate form. So the content designer, it was awesome. She just put these all on a page um, and really streamlined the whole content experience. So after doing this click through rate from Google increased by over 10%. So more people who see the, see the result in Google are clicking on it. Pages per session decreased by 21%. So the number of pages people had to view went down and applications went up. So we can see that it's just helping people get to where they need to go more easily. Um, number seven, bounces aren't always bad. Now, this is kind of, um, you know, senior management often want really clear cut success, success measures, black and white measures that show if the site's working or not. And I always try to pull people away a little bit from that because things change and context changes month to month. You've got different seasonal trends, different users. Um, and so I always try to provide context with data and not focus too much on individual metrics. And bounces are a good example of this. So, you know, on a, if it, we saw before that homepage bounces are bad, people aren't exploring the site further, they're not doing anything meaningful. Um, if you're an e-commerce site, bounces are bad because you're not exploring products um, and buying things. But a lot of the time, a one page visit is fine. So I should have mentioned before, bounces are when you just visit one page on the site and then exit the site without visiting anything else. So for gov.nz, um, they have a school holidays page. And in 2015, this page got over 50,000 um, visits in a month. And you can see the red line on the, um, the red graph line on the dashboard showing that it just kicks off. And there were no negative user feedback um, quotes coming through. So there's an on-page page feedback function in gov.nz. Um, and we would hear about it if people were having a problem with the content, right? So we didn't get that. It was just trucking along nicely, doing its job. So you can see here this dashboard really gives a lot more context. We've got a headline showing, explaining what's happened that month. We've got user research quotes to really bring, um, bring the content and services to life. Um, number eight is automated links are not enough. Now, this relates, uh, gov at gov.uk, we, we did this at the start. Um, so this is the home page. And on each deep level content page, you've got your related links um, and down the right hand side. And I think a lot of sites do this. So uh, they just pull them in automatically from the parent section. So you can see the bread, breadcrumbs up the top, working jobs and pensions, holidays, time off, sick leave. Um, and those related links are just being pulled in automatically from those sections. So they're not very focused. And when we looked at whether people were clicking on these, we could see that they weren't. They weren't engaging with a lot of these links. This is the Google Analytics um, report that shows you link clicks. So you can see what people are clicking on. And you can see only the top couple are really getting a lot of traffic. So we scrapped that. Um, we, we, we made it so that content designers would manually curate the related links on each page um, to make them directly related to the user journey. Because as we've seen before, a lot of people are coming in deep level to deep level content pages straight from Google. They're very blinkered. They've got a very clear user need in mind um, and they just want to complete that task. So 
For example, Short Start Maternity Grant, we only have one related link, which might look a bit odd, but that's the only thing that's relevant at that time. Uh, conversions are the tip of the iceberg. So conversions are really important. You know, it's like meaning, it's a meaningful engagement like downloads or purchases or contacts, um, submissions. And these are, of course, we want to increase these or, you know, we want to, we want to change these, um, get these moving in the right direction. Um, however, there's a lot of focus on these when in actual fact, it's the user journey beforehand, which really matters and which is what we can, I mean, we need to understand to improve conversions. So for example, Anonymous Bank, of course I can't name names, but um, they had two savings options and one was really well known. Savings option one was really well known. Everyone knew about it, it got a lot of traffic, um, but not many applications because the T's and C's didn't appeal to many people. Savings options two was, 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 wasn't very well known. It didn't get as much traffic, but it had a higher conversion rate. More people actually applied for this option. Um, so we recommended to the bank to actually use that option one, the more well-known one, to, to refer people, to promote the second option that, that actually um, was more valuable to people. This is a common sense example. So they, um, we saw that this, this gift basket, this is a vegan gift basket, this page was getting a lot of traffic on their website, but not many people are buying the product. So again, it's like, why aren't people buying this? Is it the right price point? Um, do they have the right products? Is it the image good enough? It really data can really show you where to focus your attention in that in that conversion um, kind of funnel. Um, small tweaks can make a big difference. I often see this. It's like just small things like adding links or um, yeah, d just doing one page related to a Google search term can really can really um, get you a lot of traffic or really allow people to engage with your site, it can make a big difference. So for gov.uk again, um, we had the vehicle tax page, which is about paying your vehicle tax. And we looked at what people were searching for on this page. Google Analytics allow shows you how to see what people are searching for on each page, which is awesome, right? Um, and we saw that people are actually searching for SORN on the page, which is about registering your vehicle as off-road so you don't have to pay vehicle tax. Um, so you can see here 5,000 searches for SORN on that page in a month. It was huge, so many searches. We added the link, you can see it in the pink box. We added the link to the page, so the SORN link. Searches dropped by 95%. So that's, you know, it's a small thing maybe having to search for something and we prevented that so people could just click on it. But those are, that's thousands of people um, making the user journey just a little bit better and a little bit easier, which is what people want, especially with government. They want to be so quick. Um, and number 10, and this is why I love data so much, is your users will surprise you and they constantly do. So for example, to Papa, um, they have a Matariki festival and they um, they have a Komato Kapahaka performance. And this happened over a couple of days and we saw a real spike in traffic to these pages. And the pages were around telling people, you know, how to get to the performance. Um, and, and, and we had personas that told us that, you know, a lot of people visiting the Te Papa site want practical information like opening times, how to get there. Um, and we thought that this was that audience, this practical audience. They wanted to understand where the performance was, what times it was on, parking. Um, but when we looked deeper into the data, we saw it was actually people viewing the live video streaming on the site and on social media. Um, so that was awesome for Te Papa. They were reaching people beyond the museum walls, hundreds or thousands of people um, and who were able to partake in the celebrations. Um, so it's, it's things like that, you know, it's not just, it's not data, it's the human needs behind the data, it's the psychology um, that really fascinates me. So here are the top trends, this is a little takeaway slide for you guys, just so you know. Um, and also on our website, if you subscribe to our newsletter, there's a download covering all these trends along with the Google Analytics or the analytics reports you can use to find them on your own website. So see how your own website is performing. Um, yeah, thanks everyone.